get down to some concrete strategies. The goal here isn't just to accumulate the information. The goal is to be able to use it once you've found it. So our first strategy for you is to actually copy the information that you find. This may sound obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do it. One never knows when you have to go back and check a fact, or when you suddenly think, what did that author really say? It can be very, very handy to have a paper copy or an electronic copy stored on your computer so that you can get back to that information quickly. The second strategy I'd like to talk about is keeping a research log. A research log is very much like a ship's log, a record of a journey. In this case, you're going to be recording the journey that you make in picking a topic, finding information, and beginning to organize it. The earliest logs we know about are ship's logs that are chronological records of things like sea and weather conditions, speed, distance covered, landmarks passed, crew members, and other details. In fact, the oldest ship's log we have dates from the 14th century BC. The log you're looking at right now records the voyage of the Lightfoot from Charleston to London in 1871. Here's what I use. It's pretty basic. Date, database, and search terms. Here's one from the University of Massachusetts that's more complicated. The format doesn't matter. It's just important that you keep a record of where you've been. Let's go back to my research and see why you might want to use a research log. First, some articles appear in multiple databases. You do a search, you recognize a title, you think, oh, I've already been in this database, except you may not have been in that database. There might be an article that only appears in one database and you might miss it because you stop too soon. Second, you'll also find databases, like Social Sciences Full Text, are relevant to many fields of study. So the databases will show up in multiple subject lists. No sense in searching the database twice. The third reason to keep a research log is time. The projects that you undertake in college are going to take you weeks to complete, even months. And most of us stop researching in order to write. The ethical researcher goes back and updates his or her research and fills in that gap as what's been happening between the time you stopped your research and the time you started to write. Having a research log can help you look at just a discrete body of information instead of starting all over again from ground zero. Let's go back to my research project. If I search the database LexisNexis Academic using three search terms, Native American, and common law and custom. I get 2,313 results. If I limit the date to articles just in 2009, there have been 64 articles published. It's lots easier to look at 64 articles than to look at 2,300. You also need to update your research because things can change while we've been writing. Congress has been known to pass legislation one week that completely destroys the argument you've been researching and writing for months. As an ethical researcher, you need to somehow address that new, very unwelcome, development. Our third research strategy is to keep a bibliography or a master list of all of your sources. I like to keep my bibliographies in an Excel file because for me that gives me a lot of flexibility. I recommend a master list of sources you've looked at, liked, copied, read, taken notes on, etc. I use an Excel file for my master bibliographies. I keep it by me when I research so I know that I'm not duplicating my work. Most important, you need to include all the information on this bibliography you will need for a complete citation of the article. Another reason for keeping a master list is that the names of articles can be really confusing. On your screen, you'll see the titles of four articles relevant to my research. I certainly can't tell them apart without a program. RefWorks. The library has a wonderful new tool called RefWorks, which creates a bibliography for you. You sign up for an account. When you find an article that looks promising, you can usually export the citation into RefWorks. 
When it comes time to print the bibliography or work cited, you tell RefWorks you want to create a bibliography. You tell it which citation format you're using. You tell it which file type you want for your finished bibliography. You tell RefWorks which entries you want. And bingo, you have a bibliography. Let's go back to my research project. I located articles relevant to my research, imported them into RefWorks, created a bibliography, and here is the printed version. Here's the article on multiculturalism and tribal sovereignty that we found in LexisNexis. But I don't see the name of the author or any publication information. RefWorks may not work well for some databases. Double check the citation format. It isn't always correct. Use RefWorks. It's a great tool, but use it cautiously. Our fourth strategy for organizing research is to keep an annotated bibliography. The difference between an annotated bibliography and a bibliography is the annotation. The annotation is simply a summary of the main points in that article. A formal bibliography is written for other researchers. It consists of one, a complete citation, and two, a summary of what the source says. Here in the PWR, your instructor might ask you for a third paragraph or part in which you comment on how you might use the information in the article. An informal annotated bibliography could be called a set of notes. After I read an article, I jot down the major points to help set the information in my head and to help me return to that article if I need to. For an informal annotated bibliography, you are the audience. Use any format or style, anything that makes the annotated bibliography useful to you. In my example, you note I only use the author's last names. I can get away with that because I use the annotated bibliography in conjunction with the Excel bibliography or master list. I separate them into two documents because I use them differently and a single document would be too cumbersome.